Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. If you're new to the world of boas and you've recently got your first boa constrictor, odds are you have a boa imperator rather than a boa constrictor. Confused? Today I'm going to answer some of the more commonly asked questions I get about boa imperator and also discuss the recent study that elevated boa imperator to a full species. Of course, I'm also going to show some top-notch examples of locality boa imperator from my collection, so be sure to stay tuned for that. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors, so if you want to learn all about these amazing animals, be sure to subscribe to the channel. So first off, one common question I get is how do you pronounce imperator? Well, I've heard it as Imperator, which is how I pronounce it, and I've heard people say Imperator or various other variations. And this is really a tomato, tomato, potato, potato kind of thing. However you want to say it is fine. I'm sure that we won't have difficulty understanding you. And if you are inclined to argue about this, you probably should find something better and more productive to do with your time. So, imperator is from the Latin word which means to order or command, and it's the root word for the uh, English word emperor. And so, one other question I got is, do you think we should call these animals, rather than common boas, we can call them emperor boas? And, you know, I think that's not a bad idea because common boa sounds a little, you know, pejorative and, you know, for lack of a better word, common and ordinary. And these animals are anything but common and ordinary, so I think it would be better to call them emperor boas. Personally, I call them by their locality. For example, I call them hog island boas, crawl key boas, uh, Costa Rican boas, etc. But if you want to call the group emperor boas as a whole, that's perfectly okay with me. Another real common source of confusion with boa imperator is, is your boa imperator a boa constrictor? And, well, it is and it isn't, and I'll explain. So boa constrictor used to be a species with nine or ten different subspecies, some of them, you know, not considered universally valid, that occurred everywhere from northern Mexico down to Argentina. But because of a study that was conducted recently, boa constrictor was recently divided into three separate species, boa constrictor, boa imperator, and boa sigma. So the subspecies boa constrictor imperator was now elevated to a full species of boa imperator. And I'll say more about that study in a couple minutes. But what really confuses the matter is that boa constrictor used to be both a common name and a scientific name. So obviously it's a scientific name, but people would just refer to them commonly as boa constrictors. You know, so of course we've got the corn snake, Alafi gutata, or whatever the hell they're calling it now. But we call it a corn snake and Alafi gutata. But the boa constrictor we call boa constrictor. Of course, you can call it the red tail boa, the common boa, but of course there's frustration and confusion with those terms as well. But now most animals that people are calling boa constrictors on the common form are really boa imperators. So now I want to get to that paper that I've been talking about, that study. And this study is available online, so I'll put the link to the paper in the description underneath this video. So I encourage you to check out this paper. Even if you don't have formal training in biology, you can still understand the overall conclusions if you don't, even if you don't understand all of the techniques they use. Uh, so the title of this paper is Phylogeographic and Population Genetic Analyses Reveal Multiple Species of Boa and Independent Origin of Insular Dwarfism. And the lead author is Darren Card you know, and a number of other people you probably recognize uh, from, you know, the BOA world. And so this paper came out in 2016 in the journal Molecular Phylogenetics and Evolution. Again, the link is below the description. Go check it out for yourself. But basically, in this paper, they used genetic and phylogenetic analyses, uh, specifically mitochondrial DNA sequences and genome-wide SNP analysis. And the conclusion from the paper is that the species formally classified as one species, boa constrictor, really represents three uh, di distinct clades or distinct groups uh, of animals which should be recognized as full species. And so I'll show you probably the key figure uh, from this paper. It's this nice map. And so here we see the range of the species formerly known as boa constrictor. 
And you can see they have identified three distinct groups based on this molecular genetic analysis. And so we have the species known as boa constrictor that's still known as boa constrictor here that uh, occurs over much of South America. This includes boa constrictor constrictor, boa constrictor amaryli, boa constrictor acidentalis, etc. Then we have a species known as boa imperator, which is shown in black here, that occurs in Central America and Northern Mexico, or I'm sorry, Southern Mexico. And so this species, boa imperator, used to be referred to as boa constrictor imperator. And you can see it goes down to Northern South America, uh, including Colombia, parts of Venezuela, and Ecuador. And so basically this is the boa imperator from Colombia, which occurs west of the Andes Mountains. And then finally we have a third species from Northern and Western Mexico that's known as boa sigma. You see it in blue here. And this includes the Tarahumar mountain boas, the Sonoran desert boas, etc. So incidentally, within the new species boa imperator, many people would include the Pearl Island boa, which used to be boa constrictor sibogue, as boa imperator sibogue, as well as the long tail boa, which would, we would call now boa imperator longicata. Although this isn't really set in stone yet, and this particular paper really doesn't go into the different subspecies of boa constrictor or boa imperator. The one technical detail I wanted to mention was about what snakes they analyzed to come to these conclusions. So in the method section, they say they extracted DNA from 77 samples from boa constrictors or boa, we should say, because it includes boa imperators at this point. And they were from preserved tissues at the University of Texas at Arlington, blood or scales collected from wild caught individuals, uh, as well as shed skin samples from commercial breeders. So personally, I'd like to see somebody duplicate this effort with an even larger number of animals because we know that boa constrictors are extremely diverse, but I would encourage you to seek out this paper and form your own conclusions. Now I want to show you some examples of locality boa imperator from my collection. And the obvious place to start is the Hog Island boa. You know, one of the original locality boas available in herpeticulture. And so Hog Island boas are from a pair of small islands off of the coast of Honduras in the Caribbean. And they're a beautiful naturally occurring hypomelanistic, that is reduced uh, dark pigment uh, form of boa. And so this is a uh, three-year-old animal born here in 2018. You can see they have these beautiful pink and orange coloration. Um, they also have a little more subtle shades of green and blue. They're just really, really colorful boas, probably the most colorful boas other than maybe the true red tails. And the, you can see they have this black flecking, which is you know common in some lines, and you know the wild animals will show this trait, although many breeders have selectively bred it out. Personally, I like the look of the black flecking. And so these hog island boas um, are kind of intermediate in size. The adults are anywhere from like four to around seven feet in length. And so that's pretty typical of boa imperator. It's, they, boa imperators don't get as big as boa constrictors. So hog island boas generally have a pretty docile temperament. They're a really nice, you know, very popular form of locality boa imperator. I was gonna say boa constrictor as far as using the common boa constrictor, but since they're really boa imperator, if you refer to the scientific classification, I'll call them locality boa imperator. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing and you're following my logic at this point. Next, we have another form of boa imperator that has evolved on a small island in the Caribbean. This is the Kral Key boa, Kral Key being a very small island off of the coast of Belize. And so these animals are a little bit smaller than the Hog Island boas. They're one of the smallest localities of boas with an adult typically in the four to five foot range. This is an adult proven breeder male who's about four feet long. You know, so if you've been thinking about a boa but were scared by the large sizes, you look no further than a qual key boa. And so these animals have this beautiful anerythristic look to them. They have this beautiful uh, black, white, and gray with lots of shades of silver. Um, they also have kind of a little bit of a hint of pink and purple. Just really beautiful animals. They're not quite a true anerythristic since they still retain a little bit of red, but they definitely have that look. 
And so the, what's interesting is that with Boa Imperator, there are forms on islands which have evolved into these small forms. You know, islands typically have less food resources, so the animals have evolved a small size due to the limited food. And the study that I mentioned by Darren Card also showed that hog island boas and boas from islands in Belize, like Kualki Boa, evolved their size uh, independently, you know, which is interesting. Because basically, if you take a large mainland boa, put it on a small island, these forms of island boa that are dwarfs can, hap can evolve again and again, uh, you know, through convergent evolution. These Kualki boas have been in captivity for the, at least the last few decades, and there's now a pretty uh, healthy captive population. However, it's thought that the population in the wild is extremely small. They may even be extinct in the wild since, you know, the island of Kroki is very, very small. It's, you know, around a quarter of a mile or so long, you know, so there might be as few as like 10 of these animals remaining in the wild. We often hear about endangered, you know, mammals like tigers or rhinoceroses or apes, things like that. But of course, these boas are also critically endangered in the wild. And hopefully there'll be more emphasis on this in the future. Another dwarf island form of boa imperator is called the cocker key boa. And these animals are pretty similar to the qual key boa. They're from another small island off the coast of Belize. And superficially, they look quite similar. You can see they have this kind of anorithristic look, kind of a dark gray and uh, dark brown and black. Um, the cocker key boas in general are a little bit darker than the qual key boas. They also have kind of more of a definite pattern of saddles, whereas the Kualki boas will often have aberrant saddles or striping. And in general, the Cocker Key boas are a little bit stockier. You can see how strong this animal is. You know, for his size, he's every bit as strong as any boa constrictor, really holding on tight there. Um, so these animals get to be about the same size as the Kualki, about four to five feet. This male is approaching sexual maturity. He'll probably be ready to breed next year. He's a, uh, you know, going on five years old, born in 2016. You know, but another cool dwarf island boa, if you're seeking the full boa constrictor experience in a pint-sized package. I have one more Central American boa imperator to share with you. This form is called the Honduran firebelly boa. And the origin of these animals is a little unclear. So the story goes is that uh, Tom Crutchfeld back in the 80s or early 90s imported some animals from the island of Roatan off the coast of Honduras. And a breeder named Dennis Sargent picked out the ones that had the brightest orange bellies and decided to breed them and establish his own line, the Honduran Fire Belly line. However, I've also been told that they were really mainland uh, Honduran boas that just had the nice uh, colors. And you know, a lot of the mainland Honduran boas look fairly similar uh, to these Honduran fire bellies. So, you know, I'll leave it up to you to decide. Um, but they are a Central American form of boa imperator. Um, they're distinguished by their beautiful colors. So, Honduran boas in general have kind of a stocky head like this guy. And they kind of have this, you know, dark brownish color with kind of maroon tail saddles. Whereas these Honduran fire belly boas add a lot of pink and orange to the sides and bellies. This is an animal that's going on three years old. He's a male. He'll probably get to be about another two feet or so. So really cool form of boa, regardless of whether it's from mainland Honduras or the island of Roatan. And so I wanted to mention there's quite a few other types of uh, mainland Central American boas available, including Costa Rican, Nicaraguan, mainland Belize, and Panamanian boas. And I think Central American boas in general haven't received the same level of popularity, so they're available relatively affordably compared to the South American boas. Uh, so if you're looking for a project to get into, you might want to check out some of these mainland Central American boas. Now I want to show you a couple bow imperator from northern South America. And northern South America is where the range of boa imperator and boa constrictor meets. So there's several very beautiful forms of boa that have characteristics of both boa imperator and boa constrictor. And they're typically classified as boa imperator, like this beautiful Barranquilla Columbia boa. So this particular animal, you can see uh, 
does definitely resemble boa constrictor constrictor, the true red tail, more than it resembles the Hog Island boa, uh, you know, farther north in the range of boa imperator. You know, and often people get into this debate about what is and what isn't a, a red tail boa, and I, you know, I, which I think is kind of pointless, which I've expressed in some of my other videos. So this is not a true red tail boa. It's a boa imperator, but you can see the tail is beautiful. It's got this beautiful rusty orangish red color, definitely red, even though it's not a true red tail. And this animal has a huge amount of contrast. So I think this animal is every bit as beautiful as my true red tail boas from Suriname and Peru. Just love this animal. This is a one year old female. She'll probably get to be around five to six feet, kind of intermediate in size. And I also really love the personality of these animals. They're not squeezy and uh, insecure like my true red tails. They, they don't hold on too tight, but they're, you know, hold on firmly. And they just inquisitively explore their surroundings, you know, almost like they're you know, a more intelligent form of boa. Just a great boa. And you know, chances are if you're new to boas, you'll pick up a, what's known as a common boa, pet store boa, it's called a Colombian red tail, you know, to try to sell it more. But these are all boa imperator from Colombia, which is probably the number one best boa for a first time boa keeper. Just love this uh, branchia boa. And I'm looking forward to watching her grow and hopefully breeding these a few years down the line. I've got one more really cool locality boa, also from northern South America at the junction of the ranges of boa imperator and boa constrictor, and that is the Paraguana Peninsula boa from northwestern Venezuela. So these animals live on this small peninsula in northwestern Venezuela, and the peninsula is kind of round in shape, but it's separated from the mainland by this really thin strip of land. So it's almost like an island situation. They've just been cut off and evolved separately from boas in the rest of Venezuela. And if you look at where this uh, peninsula is in relation to the ranges of Imperator and Constrictor, it's kind of right in the middle. So they have characteristics of both boa constrictor and boa imperator, even though technically uh, you know, boas from this part of Venezuela are boa imperator, boas from southern Venezuela are boa constrictor constrictor. And this is a really special animal because this is an anerythristic uh, Paraguana peninsula boa. This animal is naturally lacking the red and yellow pigments and just has this beautiful silvery gray coloration. You know, this is one of my most beautiful boas. Just very striking how the colors pop. Um, these Paraguana Peninsula boas have a really high amount of contrast, similar to the true red tail boas, but they're smaller in size. Uh, they're actually a dwarf that typically get to be around four to five feet in length. And if you look at the head shape, it looks very similar to the boa imperator. They have kind of a short, stocky head shape, not the long uh, wedge-shaped head of the boa constrictor constrictor. So really amazing animal. Um, not too many of these guys around. I hope to be breeding these in the next couple of years. I've got a pairing of the wild type uh, Paraguana Peninsula this year. Not sure if it's going to be successful, but a really cool locality boa. If you're lucky enough to find one, pick them up by all means. They're really hard to find. Last point I wanted to make about boa imperator is that most of the boa imperator as pets in captivity are not going to be locality specific like the animals I just showed you. Instead, they're going to be referred to as common boas or they're going to be known as morph boas like this VPIT positive uh, albino, caramel albino boa. Although most morph boas did originate from an animal from a specific locality, in general morph breeding doesn't uh, maintain the specific locality. So these uh, VPIT positives originated from a Colombian boa. You know, the, the hypomelanistic boas originated from a Panamanian boa. But by now they've been crossed with other localities of boas and they can no longer be thought of as a pure locality. In fact, some boas have actually been crossed with another species, boa constrictor, because remember these are not boa imperator. And it was a common practice for boa morph breeders to cross in some true red tail boa, boa constrictor constrictor to enhance the colors of their morph projects. So you may well have a boa that's actually a hybrid because it's got some boa constrictor, uh, constrictor uh, ancestry in it.
But the point is that most of the morph boas are largely boa imperator as far as their species, although their locality is typically mixed. And this thinking also applies to the common boa, the pet store boa, the so-called Colombian red tail, the common pet store species, which probably 90% of first time boa owners acquire. These animals are largely, although not purely, boa imperator in ancestry, uh, although they don't have a specific locality. And don't worry about it. Don't worry about trying to determine what locality it's from. It's, at this point, it's basically a domesticated animal. Just enjoy your pet boa imperator as you learn more about the other types of boa constrictors that people keep in captivity. And so I hope this video was helpful. I hope it didn't further confuse you on what boa imperator is. As always, if you have any questions about boa imperator or anything else, feel free to shoot me a line via social media. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.